with that in mind, um, what we'll be talking about today is Data Plus, uh, using a field forms builder for your forestry data collection. And then we have uh, an introduction of implementing a reflectorless laser range finder with that uh, to help with your forestry field data collection. So let me see if I can get my slides to advance here and we'll be ready to go. There we go. So what, so the uh, agenda that we're going to cover today is an overview of Data Plus Professional and uh, the new Data Plus Mobile, which was released third quarter of last year. Um, I want to talk about Data Plus in general because I know we have some um, clients on that are unfamiliar with our Data Plus soft software, and we also have some that have been using Data Plus Professional for a while and may be interested in just knowing what's new in Data Plus Mobile. And then we'll show some examples of features of Data Plus uh, using a forestry case study application that we build up. This is kind of a timber cruising application. And then we'll talk about services and support that are available for Data Plus. Electronic Data Solutions introduced Data Plus back in the late 80s. And we did this when most, if not all, of the rugged field data recorders on the market were running proprietary operating systems. So previous to Data Plus, your only option if you wanted to collect data was you had to have somebody that was familiar with that programming language. And they had to write or create a custom program for that. So this was a great advantage for people. This, uh, when Data Plus came out, they could now sit down at their computer and create their own field forms and then load those over to their rugged field computers and go to the field to collect data. And then since then, we've been, we have just been trying to keep pace with all of the latest advances in operating systems, mainly from Microsoft. So we took Data Plus through the DOS era and then just been trying to keep pace with all the different versions of Windows and Windows Mobile operating systems that have been released. So what the concept is with Data Plus is that if you have currently have paper field forms or have conceptual have uh, conceptually a field form in your mind um, that you want to use to create uh, and run on your GPS or on your rugged field computer. Uh, what Data Plus does, it provides the environment where you can take those ideas or those paper forms, like this example we have in front of you, sit down at your computer, create this with having just very little um, computer knowledge, just knowing the basics about computer, no special programming language um, or abilities required, and um, load and run these on your field, on your rugged field computer. And at the end of the day, have that data come off as a uh, Excel file, database file. Um, there's a whole bunch of number of different file formats that we can um, provide to you with the uh, Data Plus software that we'll get into. So that's kind of what we'll be talking about today is how to get from the uh, idea of what you want to collect or from your paper field forms to actually having that data um, efficiently cl collected and placed on your computer. The components of Data Plus include an application generator. So this runs on your desktop or your, la or your laptop um, computer. Um, DPC edit for writing custom routines. So although typically you know, anywhere from 80 to 100% of your data collection forms can actually be built with the application generator, if you have custom equations, uh, routines, uh, anything like this that goes beyond uh, what you can build, you can actually write custom code and implement this custom code, um, tie it into the application that you've built. To communicate with your field device, we have the host communication software. So this is called Data Plus Mobile Host. So there's a number of things that we use this for, for um, sending applications to your rugged field computer, um, loading the uh, Data Plus shell onto your rugged field computer, and of course, receiving data from your field data collector. And then we have a data file editor. 
So after you bring the data into your computer, uh, you want to convert that data to a format that's easy for you to use with existing processes and workflows. So we can provide you with a Microsoft uh, Access MDB file. Um, in Data Plus Professional, we actually used a, a, a separate converter that you had to purchase to do this. That is now included with Data Plus Mobile. So um, that's standard now. Uh, we can do DBF conversion, ASCII conversion, so you can get an ASCII text file, you can get a .csv file, um, whatever works best for you there. Uh, we have shapefile conversion, so if any of you are using GIS software to handle your data, such as uh, Esri Arc Map or things like that, um, we can convert that data directly to a shapefile. And we can do mapped export to ODBC as well. Data Plus Mobile is compatible with um, all of the Windows Mobile operating systems as well as Windows 7, 8, and 10. Now this has been the big difference with Data Plus Mobile over Data Plus Professional, is now you can actually go to the field with a Windows 7, 8, 10 tablet or laptop and collect data in that regular Windows environment where previous to the mobile version, you had to collect your data in the Windows mobile environment although all of the application and the processing was done on computers that were running Windows um, XP, 7, 8, 10, et cetera. And then we do provide different levels of uh, techn technical support that we'll get into later. Okay, so some other things that are new with Data Plus Mobile is we've always allowed you to collect data to different levels and branches. We've increased the levels and the branches with Data Plus Mobile. So now you can collect data and add up to five different levels. So when I'm talking about levels, if you look at this uh, little schematic right here, we have level one, level two, and then at level three, you'll actually see that there's three sibling um, levels or branches there. Now I can have up to 26 on any one of these levels and each one of these can have uh, 250 columns uh, within the data collection portion of that. So, so that kind of gives you an idea of what we're talking about with the different levels. And you'll get a better idea too, I think, when you look at the um, data sheet that we're gonna be using as an example today. So at the top of this data sheet, which is typical with most, that you have what we call your header information. So these are things like date, time, um, in this case, the forest, the stand, the region, uh, the person that's collecting the data. And then we have the uh, plot data and tree data at different levels along with a comments file. And then what we've done with this tree damage is we've tucked it underneath the tree data level. And then we also have another level for wildlife. So look at that. And this is basically how we separated out the levels and branches when we started creating this data sheet in the Data Plus mobile application generator. So first level stand data, then my plot data. And then on level three, I have three siblings that include the tree data, wildlife data, and then comments for the plot. And then we're collecting tree damage data that's associated with the data that's collected in this sibling with the tree data. So that's what the levels and branches look like. Now, as we move to our application generator and start building that um, on the computer, this is the structure that it takes. So I start out with level one and I just name it stand. And because that's highlighted right now, the fields that are visible over here on the right are all of the fields that I want to collect at that level. So I would add these, they're kind of hidden over there on the right or chopped off, but there would be an icon for add, delete, move up and move down. So if after you've created these different fields in here, if you want to shuffle them around a little bit to make it more efficient, you just highlight those and click on the move up or move down field. 
So if I highlight any of these levels in the hierarchy field, plot, tree damage, etc., those fields will be made visible over here. So essentially I can just freely assign them the prompts that I want to see in the field. So date field, I would call it date. You can see I can have two different prompts. And then I tell Data Plus whether it's a character or numeric field and how many um, digits or values to hold for the character and if I want um, decimals placed in there. So I can click on, again, click on each one of these. Um, I just drop down to the data format tab. That's the one that we have visible right now. And we use all of these icons as we add um, error checking, designate how data is entered for each column, what we want the column display to look like, um, user programs, things like this. I would just highlight the different field and then click on one of these icons to set that up. So we have some very good documentation for this, but I think with a lot of people, you can figure this out just by playing around. Okay, what I wanna talk about now is some existing features and new features that we have in Data Plus to customize your applications, uh, make for efficient error checking in the field, and to make you as efficient as possible in the field and then getting that data back off the computer in the office. So one of them, probably the, one of the more popular ones that people use is the different error checking that we do. So again, using this format, if I wanna do error checking on forest, I would go to my hierarchy, click on the level of the hierarchy I wanna work with and then click on the individual column and then go down and click on error checks. And in this case, what we're doing is a list error check um, with a relate to um, on the region. So I'll explain that in a minute after I list the different types of error checking that we can do. So we can do minimum and maximum range error checks. So if a number coming in has to fall between a minimum and maximum, you can set that up so people can't um, enter data that's out of range. You can do a list file menu. So you can basically have a drop down um, list of available entries that can go into that field. We can do error checks that are related to data in other columns, which is the example that I'm showing right here. So in this case, in this uh, simple timber cruising example, um, we can error check. So basically the user would enter a region. So this would be a US Forest Service region and these are numbered one for our use, one, four, five, six, and 10. And then when they get to the column forest, whatever forests that they can enter are specific to that region. So if somebody enters region one, when they get to forest, the only forest that will be made available are the ones that are specifically in region one. So they won't see any of the region four, region six, region 10 forests, et cetera. So this is what we call an air check related to data in another column. So it's a relate to air check. Uh, you can also have custom user error check programs and you can do missing data checks and you can do these a number of different ways so as you advance to a different level or as you retreat to a previous level you can have your program set up that when you do that it automatically looks for any fields that are missing data in those and then you can run uh, manually run missing data error checks as well Okay, so another feature that hey, Steve, this might be a good time to launch a poll. Oh, thanks, Jackson. I was uh, thinking it was about that time, and sometimes just skip right over those. Um, when we're doing these webinars, we like to collect a little bit of information from our attendees, just see how they're doing things, what their thoughts are on ideas, and things like this. So we've created um, three polls for today's webinar. And I'm going to launch the first one. And the question that I'm putting out there is, we want to find out how you're currently collecting data. So the question is, I currently collect field data using. So I'm going to launch that right now. And I'm going to give you just a few seconds to respond to this. And then we'll close that. And uh, 
make that information available to everybody so you can see how all the other attendees, how your colleagues are doing things. Okay, it looks like most of you have answered about this point. Uh, keep things moving along. I'm going to close that. It looks like we've got a lot of existing uh, Data Plus customers on the uh, webinar with us today. So let me close that. And now I'm going to share that with everybody so you can see how everybody voted on this particular one. And then let's uh, get up, get that off the screen and get back on with uh, the task at hand. Thanks, everybody, for participating in that. I think we'll bother you two more times during the course of the webinar today. Okay, so what we have here in front of you now um, to increase productivity and minimize um, opportunities for errors in the field, I'm showing the example of what we call a translated error check. So when you go to create an error check file, so you would designate a certain field like species under the level tree, tap on the data entry icon, and then go create error check file. It's going to ask you a question. It's going to say, hey, do you want to uh, translate this error check? And if so, do you want a meaning column associated with it? So in doing this, if you have uh, some novice um, cruisers or summer help, um, they could just enter a number in like 001, and it would load AF in the field data recorder for Alpine Fur. But that person can see that AF actually means alpine fur. So when they get to the species window on their field data recorder, they can hit the F2 key and it would bring up this drop down box if they're new and they need help. Um, veteran people would probably just know to enter, hey, if I enter 004, it actually loads DF and that means Douglas fur. Um, people that are doing this for the first time always have that option to hit the F2 key to bring up this drop-down list. So this is just a translated error check, meaning that you can enter a numeric, um, you can enter a number or a character and have actually something else loaded into the field data recorder that means that. So um, you can have, and you can also see the full meaning in the drop-down. So just kind of a quick and easy way to speed error checking on the field data recorder. Okay, now some features to accelerate your productivity in the field. Uh, you can designate how that data comes into each field. So in this case right here, um, we can do this a number of ways. So if I click on a different field and I go to data entry tab, it'll bring up this window that you're seeing right here. Now for auto data entry type, if it was something like a date or time field, I could just tell the software, hey, look, for that information from the calendar and the clock on the instrument. In this case, I'm kind of showing an example that if we're using a device like digital calipers or a laser rangefinder. So in this case, it would be a laser rangefinder because we want to actually get the total height field from the laser rangefinder. So I do user data entry type, use the drop down box to go to serial port, and then I would just open up the manual for my, my particular device and fill in this information, um, such as COM port, baud rate, et cetera. And then a lot of these devices will deliver the data to you in what's called a uh, NMEA data string. And you need to parse out that particular value. So if I clicked on the advance icon that's over here on the far right, I could tell with that information that, hey, my total height is coming in as the third value in this NMEA data string, so that's the one I want to grab to actually place in the total height. So you would set all that up, and it just runs automatically when you're in the field, when your field data recorder gets to total height. You can tap a button on the field data recorder or on the laser rangefinder in this case, and it would load that information to you. So other things that you can do to speed data collection in the field is you can have a, a field set up to automatically copy data forward. Uh, very handy if you're working with like tree species. Uh, you may obviously be in a 
stand where all of the species are the same. So instead of having to keep entering that same species over and over again, it would auto copy that for you. And if you happen to change because you come across a new species, you would just use the left arrow um, or tap and go back and set the new species and it would start auto copying that one forward from you. If you're keeping track of numbers, you can set it to automatically auto increment from the value above. We mentioned the read date and time clock from the internal time clock. You can preload constant data. And if you're doing any statistical studies, you can actually have something set up um, to grab data from a random number generator as well. So just some examples of what you can do to um, accelerate productivity in the field for um, your applications. Uh, the other thing that you can do to make uh, data collection easier is use what we call a constant column display. So in this example, we're down on the uh, tree damage level. And you'll see on the uh, little data collector on the right that I'm carrying some data with me from the previous level, such as plot number, tree number, species, etc. So I actually know for the damage level that I'm collecting, what plot I'm on, what tree this damage is associated with, and what species it is. And then the example that we have here in pale green shows that I just drop into my um, screen define option, go down here to the bottom where it says constant column display, and then from the list of available columns, and these are all of the columns that you created for your application, I would just use the right arrow and place these to view as a um, line or a virtual display. And we'll get into the difference of that here shortly too, what the difference is between a line and a virtual display. But basically, this is just saying, okay, when I'm at a lower level or at a different level, I want this data to be made available at the top of the screen for me just to help my staff know where they're at within the program. So speaking of screens with this, we have a number of ways of customizing the screens on your field data collectors. Uh, one of them is you can have a choice of different displays. So you have a choice of how that data is displayed on your unit. We call this a line display, line align, or a virtual display. And I do have the next slide coming up that shows examples of those. You can have single or double line prompts. You can use the uh, constant, you can show a column on a subsequent screen. So this is actually an option in addition to the constant column. So let's say you do have a huge data sheet. It's maybe 60 columns wide. And there's something clear over on the far left that you want to carry with you. So maybe it's a species column. You can set that up and carry that column with you, even though you're clear over here on column 55, and it's column number one. So you can set up uh, Customized Data Plus to do that. You can have uh, columns that are view only or hide columns. An example that we see quite a bit is that people will have time in there so they can keep track of how long their crews are taking to do certain things. So you can have a time column there, but you can click on a box and hide that column so it's not interfering with their work and not visible to them. Uh, custom help messages are really handy and we'll show how to build those. And you can easily format the, the data for different type of handhelds. So if we're looking at the same type of handheld here and you have your choice of how that data is viewed, um, this is the example of what a line looks like. So with a line display, it tries to fit as many of those columns on one display as possible. With the line align, it does the same thing, but it centers all those for you. With the virtual display, the best way to think of that is like viewing an Excel spreadsheet, and you have this little four-inch window that's moving around within that spreadsheet. So that's what we call a virtual display. And then as we mentioned, we can easily accommodate different handheld display sizes. So here you see an example of a portrait and of a landscape display size and, um, and how they handle uh, the information on there. Oh, another example I want to point out here too is I think Data Plus runs most optimally on devices that have full keyboards, um, as in the case of this Allegro 2 on the right. However, increasingly, uh, we're seeing people run Data Plus mobile on devices that have limited or no keyboards at all. 
an example are some of these new Windows 8 and 10 tablets that are coming out. And because Data Plus uses the function keys for drop-down lists, for advancing to different levels or retreating levels, when you're setting up your unit, you can say, okay, I want to keep a, a virtual function key bar on the tablet at all times. So if you look at this Archer 2 on the left, that's how that works out. So you would just go into the menu, hit Setup, and go to Preferences, and you can designate how you want that uh, screen set up and uh, um, if you want those virtual function keys made available to you. Now we also talked about setting up the displays with custom, co um, custom help messages on there. So as I go to a particular value, so again in the hierarchy I'm highlighting the damage level, and as I get to this first field in damage level, I can go into my app generator and say, hey, I want a custom column help message here. I want it to say damage indicator F2. So as they get to that field, they'll be prompted that, hey, if I, um, that's what I'm being asked for is a damage indicator. And if I press the F2 key, it's going to bring up a list of all of the sources of damage for that particular field. So this is what it's like to build those and this is how they appear on your field unit. Now you can have two levels of these help columns. This one is a uh, column specific one, but you can also have a bar on there that stays constant and static all the time that may have things like F2 for help, F4 for retreat, F5 for advance, things like this. So it's always on the window at all times. And then the custom one would actually change depending on which window you're at. So these are just things to help field people as well. I mentioned the um, different levels of touchscreen support. Um, these are something that can be set up depending on what type of keypad, if any, that you have on your device. So keep in mind, uh, those of you using tablets, that those can be customized um, to use without a, a full keyboard on there. And other things to accelerate productivity in the field is uh, data flow control using jump tables. So this is something you can use to allow specific movement to a column based on data from other columns. So for example, maybe somebody's doing a little bit of a research and you get to a Douglas fir, uh, you might want to collect a lot more data on it than you do the other species. So you can use jump tables um, for that or a new feature in Data Plus Mobile that we call branch control that I believe I have an example coming up on that. Now you can also do column searches. So if you spend a whole day out in the field collecting data, and you want to find the first instance of alpine fir in your species list, you can search down that whole column quickly uh, using a column search to find that. And you can also do the same thing looking for missing data. So you could go down a whole column and say, hey, I just want to see if there's any blanks in this before I leave the field and drive back five hours to my office. Now something new that we've also... Please, let's go ahead and launch poll number two. Okay. Thanks for that, Jackson. I must not even be paying attention to those on there. Okay, we do have a second poll that I want to share with you. Um, this one is about, um, called I collect the following types of data. So we've got some options there that include uh, timber cruising, forest inventory, log scaling, GIS information, etc. So those of you that are um, hanging with us through this, we'll give you a few seconds to respond to that. Okay, looks like about three quarters of you have voted, so we're going to close this up. Uh, I see a lot of other category there, which tells me I'm missing something, so let me quickly close that and share it with everybody. And we'll get back to our presentation and introduce uh, GPS using Data Plus Mobile. Okay, I think we're back on track now. Thanks, Jackson, for that. Now, we've always allowed you to collect GPS data 
in your Data Plus field forms. However, with the release of Data Plus Mobile, we've made that much easier, and we've actually built the GPS right into it. And there's a couple different ways you, you can collect this. If you're logging GPS as a point, you can actually record that information um, as fields right in your Data Plus application. If um, you're doing it as lines or a polygon, for example, maybe you're mapping the boundary of a plot, um, you want to map a stream or a road while you're out there. If I check on lines in this application or polygons instead of points, what it's going to do, it's actually going to log that GPS as a separate file but associated with that particular field in your Data Plus application. So when you download data, um, you'll be aware that there is GPS data with that, but it will be a separate file. So those are the two ways you can log that data internally as part of the file or log to a separate file. Lines and polygons are always logged to a separate file. Points you can choose either way logging to a separate file or logging as part of the application. Okay. Now we've also implemented a new auto store feature in this. And what this does is allows you to automatically store data in a column that's based on data in another column. So in this little example right here for the wildlife portion of this um, forestry study, if somebody sees a bald eagle, um, they're going to automatically store that it's in a conifer. Um, if somebody um, sees a moose, it's going to default to the number one on there for, for just one of those. So you can always click back and change these, but just to, again, speed data collection in the field, uh, you can have this data subsequent data automatically stored based on data in a previous column. So we call that auto store feature and you'll just see that this is implemented. Clicking on the auto store tab comes down and asks you to um, create that file. This one here is a new uh, favorite of mine. It's called a branch control feature. Now uh, we used to exclusively handle this type of uh, process using jump um, jump fields, but I think it's much easier with the branch control. So with this example right here, when they get to the tree designation, so we go up and we click on branch control, go to our available columns, and the ones we want to use, we click on the add button and move over here into this area. So in this example, when they see the DF as designation for Douglas fir, they're basically going to skip or leave empty all of these fields. For all of the other trees, they're going to be required to enter the diameter, breast height, and the total length or height of that tree, but not for Douglas fir. So you can set uh, these types of designations up easily using this branch control feature for whatever field you think is appropriate. Now, the other things that we can do in Data Plus just to make field data collection easy for you is allow input from external devices. So these can be GPS receivers. Um, so these can be internal or external GPS, laser range finders, electronic scales, barcode scanners, digital calipers, um, or just Bluetooth from any other device that you may have. And uh, with that, I'm going to give Jackson some time to talk to you specifically about uh, using laser range finders for your tree data. Thanks, Steve. This is Jackson Bigley. I'm in the GPS and GIS area here at Electronic Data Solutions. And we're going to, as part of this webinar, highlight a couple of devices from a company called Laser Technology, which are ideal for timber cruising and forestry. These devices integrate very well with the Data Plus mobile application. Steve even showed you some ways to configure an external sensor, whether it be uh, GPS or something like a laser rangefinder. So the first device that we're going to talk about here from Laser Technology is the True Pulse Laser series. You can see a picture of it here on a couple different pictures of it here on the screen. 
The most common use of the true pulse in forestry is estimating tree height, which is obviously a very critical aspect to have uh, as part of, part of doing your timber cruising. Part of the reason the true pulse is so good with that and with forestry is it has reflectorless laser technology. So it's ideal in the fact that it can calculate based on angles. So tree height is calculated from the horizontal distance to the tree and at the top and bottom angles using the built-in inclinometer. So you shoot to the base of the tree or to the stem of the tree, it calculates the horizontal distance, then you shoot the top angle of the tree and the bottom angle and it gives you your height. There's also the option to put the tree pulse in filter mode and use a reflector which can be especially helpful in areas where you have a lot of brush. You can't actually see through the branches to, to the stem of the tree. Um, a lot of brush around stream channels when you're trying to figure out buffer zones, things like that. So it has a very handy filter mode. You can also use a reflector and you could place a reflector on the stem of the tree and move back to a, to a certain distance and then be able to get the horizontal distance and then get a very accurate tree height. You could use a reflector as well along, say, a stream channel when trying to figure out how far you are from a stream channel. So it provides a very fast method to accurately measure tree height. And the data is output from the true pulse directly to the Data Plus mobile application on your handheld. And the tree height is automatically recorded, recorded as an attribute in the corresponding form, like Steve was showing how you get that set up and configured. So it can be the true pulse is often used just in your hand. So it's very handy, it's small laser. Uh, or you can mount it on a staff, and if it's mounted on a staff, that helps your stability and increases your accuracy and gives you a little more accurate tree height. In terms of uh, just pricing, how it ranges, there's the 200 model and the 360 model, and it starts at the 200L for $449 and goes up to the 360R, which is a rugged device, just under $1,800. So for more details on any of that, you can certainly contact uh, uh, and we can give you more information. Okay, let's go to the next slide there, Steve. So you saw this form earlier, and just to take, you know, basically your your form that you're trying to duplicate in Data Plus Mobile. And I just wanted to highlight quickly that the Triples 360 is used quite often for well, it calculates bearing because it has a built-in compass, so you can point it, fire it, and get the bearing, the readout inside the screen, so you get your your accurate azimuth. So that can be used to fill out information like you can see here on a bearing and distance for something related to wildlife or other features on the ground. It's also often used for what's called GPS offset mapping. So you can stand in one location and map uh, features from that one location using the bearing and distance. And that could be a handy tool for stem mapping. Uh, mapping the trees in a specific plot or determining if trees are within a specific plot. And this is available in the 360 series of the True Pulse devices. The 200 series doesn't have the built-in compass. Okay, next slide, Steve. The second device we want to highlight from laser technology is the RD1000 that was created specifically for forestry and timber cruising. This device has been out for quite some time. There's a lot of these out. Uh, folks using these for timber cruising. They can be a standalone device, so they can be paired with a uh, true pulse laser and then paired with Data Plus Mobile. So they're ideal, they're an ideal tool for measuring tree diameter. That's sort of the primary use for this device. And similar to the true pulse, you can penetrate thick brush in filter mode. So that way you can get through the thick brush and the branches and actually map what you're trying to map, get a distance. The high routine, and also, so it has the capability to do not only diameter, it has the capability to do height as well. And it works off of angles and a horizontal distance similar to the true poles. The, true, the RD1000, the picture in the upper right here, you can see the RD1000 and the true poles kind of bound together with a bracket. And that's a common approach. The reason you do that is the true pulse provides the accurate horizontal distance to the tree, and then the RD1000 is used to determine the diameter. So it has the ability to do you know, DBH or a diameter at a specific height on the tree, 
or heights or determine a height on the tree which a certain diameter is reached. So very handy tool for that. The RD1000 output to the Data Plus mobile application is actually via a serial cable. So again, a, a simple configuration within the application. Okay, one more slide. Thank you. So the idea here is the greatest benefit for timber cruising is combining the RD1000 and the TruePulse series with the Data Plus mobile app. So they're very helpful or handy devices standalone, and a lot of people use them standalone. And I would say they're even more helpful when paired with Data Plus Mobile. So as we've discussed through the webinar, they provide a you know a fast and accurate method for populating tree height and diameter in Data Plus Mobile. They're also efficient compared to very efficient compared to traditional methods of doing this type of work. And so they offer a lot of specific benefits on uh, shooting through brush, working in areas that are, you know, where it's very difficult to see what you're trying to get to. You don't have to be at an exact distance from a tree uh, to do your height measurements. You can basically be at any distance you want for the most part uh, and be able to deal with the things like the heavy brush that you typically have out in the field. So Data Plus Mobile, the general idea here is that it supports a wide range of external sensors. Uh, we just happen to here for forestry, we're highlighting couple of these sensors from LTI, uh, given the true pulse in the RD1000. And as Steve has been showing all along, it's a straightforward process uh, to configure your Data Plus mobile application to support external sensors like these from a laser technology. Okay, Steve, back to you. Thanks, Jackson. So we uh, have been talking specifically about the Data Plus application generator. I want to introduce um, another component that comes with the Data Plus package, uh, which is Data Plus Host. So it's an integrated communication software for uh, Windows and Windows Mobile. And depending on the computer operating system that you're running, it's an overlay for either Microsoft ActiveSync or Microsoft Windows Mobile Device Center. And again, as I... Um, talked about it enables file transfer between the PC and handheld GPS or tablet and when it's on your computer it can run in the background um, or unattended. This is an example of what the new Data Plus mobile host looks like so it's a little bit different than our Data Plus professional host and that you have these additional tabs on the top. So if I'm talking to a mobile device um, like a Juniper Systems, uh, Allegro 2, or something like that, then I would click on the Mobile tab, and then you see that you have icons for installing Data Plus to your mobile device, sending applications to it, sending data, like if you were preloading data, and then, of course, uh, receiving data. Now, these other tabs are up here. Let's say, for example, that you were running Data Plus on a uh, Windows 10 tablet, and you would click on this removable one and you could actually load your Data Plus application to something like a USB flash drive. So that would enable you to do that and then you could carry that application over to your tablet, uh, to your Windows tablet with that flash drive. Now having the ability to now collect data in Windows 7, 8, and 10 also means that people can conceptually build their application on a laptop and then take that laptop to the field. So that's why we have the Data Plus PC tab here. So depending on what you're using to collect your data will determine which of these tabs that you're using and what functionality you have available to you. I also wanted to show this screen. We talked about the uh, DPC edit module and the ability to write custom programs for calculations, reports, uh, data manipulation, etc. So this is just kind of an example of that tool called DPC Edit. Um, as we're wrapping things up now, I just wanted to um, talk about Data Plus mobile packages and pricing. Uh, there's various ways to buy this. You can buy a Data Plus package with a mobile license or buy a Data Plus package with a Windows license. You can buy additional licenses for your Windows or your mobile devices. And then we have field kits available that uh, include everything but the application generator. 
because generally just uh, one agency or company needs uh, one license of the application generator. Everybody else can be running mobile licenses or if they're downloading and editing data from remote locations and they would just need the field kit, um, the DPM-FLD designations there. And then some people, people may just want the host to just download and uh, send the file and somebody else can edit it or convert it to the file format that they want. Now we do have a 25% discount for existing Data Plus professional customers that are migrating to Data Plus mobile. So we can help you out with that. We have all of your license information on file and can uh, transfer everything over for you. Um, we're also offering some new levels of uh, Data Plus mobile support. Um, with new users, the first uh, 90 days of support are free. Then we have um, a level of application support for developers. Um, this basically gives you a toll-free number and a dedicated email address with the guaranteed response time and then a level of Data Plus mobile support for end users. So same type of thing, toll-free number, dedicated email address, and um, a guaranteed response time and then a per-incident support level that we're offering as well. Um, some people may not want to take the time to develop their own application, so we're happy to do that for you. Um, it makes it easy if you already have paper data sheets or you can just kind of draw something up for us. We can give you an estimate based on the hours of time that we think um, it takes to do this. We're also starting to build a Data Plus application library on our website, and right now I believe there's four applications out there that are free and available to you. So you can use those as opposed to starting from scratch. If we have something similar, um, you can take it and just um, edit it. Um, applications that we've built for people where they've paid for us building those, we don't make those available to the public, but ones that uh, we've just run samples with, we're putting those on our website, and I'll give you the link for that in a minute. But I do have our last poll that I want to launch today. And this is uh, titled, What is Most Important to You in Collecting Field Data? So I'm going to launch that. Again, this is multiple choice. If you folks could just take a few seconds and fill that in, then we'll uh, wrap that up and give you some uh, access to some additional resources for Data Plus as we close things up. And then we will have some questions and answers at the end, too. So if you look over at the... Um, right-hand side of your screen where the um, questions pane is. Um, you can see how you can expand that out and type questions in there, and we'll read those off and um, answer those as, uh, as we have time. Okay, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, sorry for those of you that are, uh, haven't had a chance there, but just in the essence of time. And share that. Looks like efficient workflow takes it today, but I think uh, other things are, um, such as ease of use and accuracy, are important there too. So, good. Thank you for your participation in that. Let me see if I can get my slides to advance. Just want to introduce, uh, we have a lot of um, users of Data Plus. It's a very popular program, not just in forestry, but in fisheries, wildlife, uh, range collection. So we get a lot of state and federal agencies in addition to um, private uh, organizations using Data Plus. Now some resources that we have available to you. Some of you may not be aware that we actually have a blog. Um, we maintain this on our website. So if you go to electdata.com, you can see our blog title to the field and back. Um, there is a blog that was kind of an introduction to today's webinar called Data Plus Mobile using a forms builder for forestry. But I want to call your attention to uh, five additional blogs that are out there that might help you with your field data collection. There's a two-part series on implementing GPS in your Data Plus Mobile application. Uh, there's an introduction to Data Plus Mobile in general. And then we have a couple laser rangefinder ones out there. These were used in different applications such as stockpile volumes and baseball fields, but it will still introduce you to the concept of using laser range finders. So I want to make you aware that these blogs are out there as well. 
and then this is actually what I think is one of the best resources for people, uh, especially um, first timers that are just starting with Data Plus, is that when you download the real version of Data Plus or the trial version, it's going to create a documents folder for you um, underneath the Data Plus um, program. And you can go into that documents folder, and I believe there's about six or seven documents because we have uh, documents for the application builder, the host, the editor, the field unit, etc. But the one of the most important ones out there is the tutorial. The tutorial takes you through about 10 different lessons with a lot of uh, prompts and imagery to make it easy to follow, where you could follow right through that tutorial and build your own application. And it does use the specific application that we're showing today. So if you want to build that application yourself and you want to learn about doing screen defining, air checking, um, column branches, things like this, um, there's a, there is a, uh, there's even a uh, lesson in there for integrating your laser rangefinder with this. And then lastly, here's the link to try this out. So we have made available a demo version of this. And the demonstration version of all of our programs is exactly like the real thing, except for it only allows you to collect a limited number of lines of data. But uh, I believe it is a sufficient number of lines where you can get a real good feel for how the application runs. So this will allow you to uh, try out building your application and even running it on your own field device to see how it works out for you. And it's at this same link where we have those free sample applications. I believe right now three of those are fisheries related applications um, and then one of them is that forestry application that we've been playing with today. And then just lastly as we close things up here I do want to make you aware of other products and services available from Electronic Data Solutions. We provide uh, water and weather monitoring instrumentation database software, um, UAS products and services. We have a large inventory of rental equipment. We're an authorized uh, repair center for some of the equipment. And we also offer professional GIS services as well. So thank you for your attendance. I'll go ahead and start monitoring with uh, Jackson's help the questions panel. I apologize, we went a little bit longer today. We've had uh, three questions come in. I've answered the first two and sent those out to the group. There okay. is the third question, which um, if you want to answer that now or if we want to send that out uh, later via email. Do you have the questions listed there in front of you? I do. Um, one of the first questions on here is, will this webinar be available as a PowerPoint or better video? with your comments so I can share with my potential users and development team, yes. Uh, we have been recording this and we are gonna put this out on our website um, so you can replay this uh, webinar later. So that is done. Okay. Um, another question about the same thing. Yeah. Do you have a check cruising interface with Data Plus Mobile? In other words, can I load up a cruiser data in our check cruise data in the software and then have the software calculate differences? Yes, we've actually done some custom ones of those too, and I'll get back with you specifically on that. Um, so, I, Jackson, am I missing anything, or have I gone through all the questions no. there? No, those are the three questions that we've had. Okay. Well, thank you very much, folks. I appreciate your time. I'm sorry we went a little bit um, over with that. Uh, we will make this available out on our website as a recording so you can uh, view it later with your staff. So thanks again.